This is a short demo of how you can use Law and B4 when working with the Yoxic project. And you can use any email client which can be configured to easily get the message ID of a given email. And I'm using Thunderbird here. And we're going to start by installing a plugin which will make it easier to get the message ID for any email we want to look at. So we're searching for message ID in the Thunderbird add-ons and this first copy message ID add-on adds a little button to copy the message ID to the clipboard and that's going to make our lives easier through this demo. So let's install this add-on. And then the next step that we're going to do is set up an NNTP account to read messages from Law. We can use this for reading the kernel mailing lists, several Yocto mailing lists, and mailing lists from many other projects. So we're going to add an other account, and we add a news group account here in Thunderbird. Um, we need to provide an email address for this um, that isn't really used in this demo, but we'll add our email address, and then we're going to set the news group server to nntp.law.kernel.org. And we're going to add this account. Now let's reduce the bandwidth used by limiting the downloads to just pull messages that were sent within the last 30 days. And now we're going to go to our new newsgroup account and we're going to say manage newsgroup subscriptions. And then we're going to search for the newsgroups that we want to subscribe to, which in this case is the open embedded mailing lists. We're going to select the three mailing lists here, say OK, and then we will um, see these mailing lists appear as news groups. Now we don't want to download all the headers. By default it's going to try and pull everything from the start of these mailing lists years ago. We don't need that. So we've just told it to download the latest 500 message headers. Now take a moment to download these headers and then we can have a look at the mailing list. And we're going to look for a patch that we or a patch series that we can apply in Open Embedded Core. Now this here, a couple of SPDX fixes, is a good example to test. There's a cover email and two patches. So we've got it open up here and we're going to use the copy message ID button that was provided by our add-on to copy the message ID to the clipboard. Now we've got a terminal here. Uh, we're in an up-to-date clone of Open Embedded Core from the date that I recorded this demo. And the first thing we're going to do here is install B4 using pip because it's a Python package. So you'll need a recent version of Python 3 for this. It's going to go ahead and download B4 and its dependencies and install things. And when it's installed, we're just going to very quickly confirm that it works by checking the B4 version. Now we can go ahead and pull down the patches using the message ID that we copied earlier. Um, what this is going to do is create a, a mailbox file which can be used with git am. So let's copy the git am command that b4 has helpfully given us and we're going to run that. And what we see here is a failure for the patch to apply. So this one's pretty simple. We can go ahead, give that feedback on the mailing list to the patch author and tell them to send a new version of the series. So now let's go and look for something else that we can try. And we're just scrolling back through. Here's a good one to try. So this is a 26 patch series from Tim. Um, B4 really helps when dealing with larger patch series like this. So we're going to go to the cover letter and, we, and we're going to copy the message ID again. And then back in our terminal, let's run B4AM with that message ID that we've just copied. Now we see all 26 patches downloaded and added to a mailbox file, which we can go ahead and pass to git am. And we see that everything applies. That's pretty good. Um, so we can take a look at the list of what's been applied there. It just shows the one line versions of the commit messages. And then we can look at the git log 
and just scroll back and see each of these patches has been applied in order on top of the commit that we previously had checked out. And at this point we can do whatever testing and review we want and then send some feedback on that patch series to the mailing list. Now before we finish I want to show two other features of B4. The first is how easy it is to add your sign off to all the patches that you apply. This is a common task for maintainers. For this we're going to use the dash s argument to B4. And you can see the sign off has been added to each patch that's shown in the B4 output and then if we run git am on this series, look at the git log, we also see the sign off in every commit here. For the last feature that I want to demonstrate, we're going to look at a different set of patches. What I've got selected here is a v6 of a series, and if you look, you'll see a v7 of the series just below this. But what if we missed the v7? What if we thought the v6 was the latest? So we're going to copy the message ID for the version 6 of the patch series. And we're going to go over to our terminal and we're going to use the dash C argument to be for to tell it to check for more recent versions of this patch series. So now what B4 is going to do is it's going to look at the mailing list and it's going to find that there is this version 7 series sent after the version 6. So what it's done since we passed this dash C argument is download the latest version of that patch series for us. So you know, this saves the potential for accidentally applying or reviewing an old version of the patch series.